This is an Onco HTR380 and as you can see the standby light is flashing. If I switch it on, it goes straight off again after a couple of seconds. Now one of the things you can do with these, just to sort of check that it's not totally sort of dead, is remove the two main fuses, the two little glass fuses down in there by those two relays. And it should stay on if I take those out. You need to be careful taking them out because if you break them, you'll have no fuses for it and you really need to use the same type of fuses. So now if I turn it on. It'll stay on. Doesn't mean it's working, it just means all I've done is disconnected the main power supply to the main amplifier section so the protection circuitry isn't triggering the CPU board to switch the unit off. So we can sort of determine that this is that the processor board is running okay. So I'll put the fuses back in. Okay, I've now put the fuses back in without breaking them, which is a good start. If I now switch the unit back on, we go back into our fail-safe mode. This is how the power supply in the Onco works. Now we've got a big mains transformer here. There's another transformer on the standby board. And the standby board has its own separate little power supply that provides the thing enough power to sit there and stand by and detect when you've pushed the button to actually turn it on. So what happens is this transformer, when you turn it on, this transformer gets power and there are there's a there's a winding here and it's got five taps on it. The the two outer taps, if you measure the voltage across the two outer taps, you'll read 72 volts AC. Across the two inner taps, you'll read 20 volts, uh, 40 volts AC. Now, so when you turn the amplifier on, these two relays in their default state power the amplifier through the inner taps. And these inner taps are fused. And I'm guessing the fuse is if there's a major fault on the amplifier, those fuses will pop and nothing really will ever work from that point onwards. So. Assuming, as the, assuming everything's okay, the microprocessor will then switch this transistor on. Now this is from a signal called SEC1H, which then switches these relays into the different state, into the other, other switch position, which then takes the full AC power from the outer windings of these transformers, smooths it, rectifies it, powers it into the amplifier. Right, now this particular amplifier has got a fault in that one of the protection circuits are being activated and this is a waveform on the oscilloscope of, of kind of what's happening. So at this point I pretty well here I switch it switch the unit on the protection circuit detects that there's a, a problem and sets a the V protect signal high. Now this upper trace is the microprocessor initialize the, the microprocessor signal where it actually tells the amplifier to switch to the main outer power supply, the, you know, the full voltage that comes out of the outer taps of the transformer. So this little pulse here, normally if there wasn't an error, this would carry on high. But as there's an error, it's gone low. So what happens, this pulse here is the, the signal that turns this transistor on which flips these two relays to, to run to the higher voltage. Now, it's, at which point it then starts looking at this input over voltage detections error, it says there's an error, switches the unit off. Now, we can look at this, there's another waveform here. This is measuring the full, the 49 volt supply coming out of the, uh, of the uh, into the main amplifier board. So, I turn it on here, it's sitting, it's running off the inner windings here, while the microprocessor in this point here is initializing itself. So it's running off this inner winding, which gives it, gives it a supply of, sort of plus or minus 24 volts. The pulse turns that transistor on, which flips the relays to the full outer windings. 
the microprocessor then picks up this voltage here, which is the error voltage, switches the main relay off to the main amplifier, so the whole amplifier then loses its power. So this is the this is the point where the relays switch it to the outer windings. So we get this brief pulse where we where the voltage then jumps up to 35 volts. Then it switches off and drifts back down to ground. Now you've got this you've got this slope on the waveform because this this point's running off the smoothing capacitors, and I'm measuring the voltage directly on one of the big smoothing capacitors. Now the protection circuitry on these seems to be something that's fairly standard on a lot of amplifiers. This is the one of the actual amplifier modules, which is a bit of a problem in this unit because this, this is, uh, where is it? There, you can just about see it there. That, it's, a, it's a module made by Sanyo, it's an SDK443530. It's got three separate amplifiers inside it. And the big problem is Sanyo don't make these anymore. So you take, you can buy them from AliExpress and they range in price, but whether they're any good or not, I don't know, I haven't bought one. They're about $10. But if you look on eBay, I think the same companies are selling them for about $29. So it's, take your chance with that. It's also got a big, you have to, to change it, you'll have to completely dismantle the unit to get the actual, get this main board out, which is a bit of a, faff as well so you've also what is useful on the circuit diagram is they've got a pin they've got a pin out and the voltages you would expect to measure on the on these pins on this module so you can kind of do some bit of testing yourself quite easily um, where it says 49 volts that's this is assuming that it's actually running properly not in a fault condition so this this unit shuts down and it uh, most of its shutdown period is running on 24 volts, so you would need to sort of halve these voltages to get a give you an idea. Now, wh what it does, the output to the speakers come off these. There's a resistor pack here. What they got? They got two high wattage. In this case, it's a two watt resistor, and it's 0.22 of an ohm. Uh, they're joined together with a center pin. There's one here. There's another one there, and there's another one over here. These are these are what they're, there's one of them. There's the other one. There's the third one. They've got th you can see the silk screen of where the resistor packs actually are. If they, if you're getting a voltage on these center pins, you've got a you've got a problem, and the the protection circuitry will fire. Now on these particular units, I've got on this particular one here, I'm reading about 18 volts, so that's fired off the protection circuitry, which is why the this particular unit has gone into standby mode. I've looked at the circuit diagram. There's a few. There's a there's a few capacitors that sort of potentially could cause the problem on the input to the stage. But I've met what I've measured is they all look perfectly okay. The resistors measure okay. I've never known resistors really go open circuit. Electrolytics often the problems. They they look all right. You can usually measure those with your multimeter if you put your multimeter on ohms put two probes across the pins the the resistance will go up and up and up and up and eventually it'll just become so high the meter won't read it and if you reverse the probes around the other way you'll get a the reading will sort of start off as a sort of minus number or drop down to zero then go back up again that's a fairly simple way of testing a capacitor that's about it really for this unit i'm not sure i may buy one of these modules to see if it fixes it or i may not it's a bit of a gamble really might just use it as spare parts. So there we go.